Today's topic is sexually transmitted diseases, which has been renamed as sexually transmitted infections by WHO. So the term sexually transmitted diseases is a term used to denote the diseases which are spread principally by sexual intercourse, close body contact, transplacental spirit, passage through the birth canal from mother to baby, intrapartum or lactation during the neonatal period. So WHO recommends that the term STD should be replaced by the term STI. And STI has been adopted since 1999 as it is a better incorporates asymptomatic infections or the carriers of infection who do not suffer the disease themselves. And it also has been adopted by a wide range of scientific societies and publications. So a better terminology will be STI and not STD. Now the most commonly infectious disease in most part of the world are the sexually transmitted infections. And we know that STD affect men and women of all background and economic levels. And it occurs in people who are younger than 25 years of age and they are highly prevalent among teenagers and young adults. So they can be classified as viral, bacterial, parasitic and fungal. So the viral include the acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, genital herpes, genital warts. The bacterial include the syphilis, gonorrhea, non-gonorrheal urethritis, chancroid caused by hemophilus ducri, non-specific vaginitis and granuloma inguinal. Parasitic includes the uh, trichomonas vaginitis and urethritis and scabies and fungal include the vaginal thrush, vulvovaginitis and balanitis. Now the incidence of STI is rising because in the last few decades young people have become sexually active earlier and yet they are marrying late and divorce is more common because of few stable marriages and the net result is that that sexually active people are more likely to have multiple sexual partners during their life and are essentially at a risk of developing STIs. Most of the times, these STI do not cause any symptoms, particularly in women. But when the symptoms develop, they are also confused with the other diseases which are not transmitted sexually. And even when the STIs do not cause any symptoms, the person who is infected may be able to pass the disease. And it is recommended that periodic testing and screening for people should be done. Now, STIs can be more severe and more frequent for women because the frequency of asymptomatic infection, women do not seek care until the serious problems have developed. And STI can spread to upper genital tract, which can lead to infertility and ectopic pregnancies. And it may be also human papilloma virus infection causing warts can also be associated with cervical and vaginal and vulval cancers. And these STI can cause genital warts and other genital cancers. So STI can pass from mother to her baby during birth, before birth and immediately after birth and they can be treated effectively and some infections have become resistant to the drugs used to treat them and now they require newer kinds of antibiotics. So it's a long list of the microorganism causing STIs and the, some the transmission has been described and some the transmission is known root. So, uh, what are the bacterial causes? Neisseria gonorrhea, Chlamydia trachomatis, Treponema pallidum, Haemophilus ducri, C. granulomatis, Ureoplasma urolyticum. And the viral include the HIV, the herpes simplex virus, the hepatitis B virus, the uh, human papilloma virus, and Molluscum contagiosum virus. And other diseases that are other protozoal is the Trichomonas vaginalis. Now, but these diseases can also be transmitted by close contact and they include the Mycoplasma hominis and Gardnella vaginalis and the viral disease includes CMV, HCV, herpes simplex virus and the Epstein-Barr virus and like Candida and Scabies. So here we are seeing a pubis scabies. Now this pubic lies, they are tiny insects had that infect the pubic hair area and they lay the eggs and these lice can also be found in the armpit hair and eyebrows and they can be transmitted by close contact between two individuals and pubic lice cause itching in the area covered by pubic hair. Now coming to the more specific gonococca and chlamydial infections which we will be taking further later we will also take syphilis, herpes and HPV and lymphogranuloma venereum, chancroid and granuloma inguinal and other miscellaneous causes. So basically there are three approach to diagnose and treat them. One is a laboratory based, you know what is the infection and you do the culture and sensitivity and give the antibiotic. That is called lab based approach. Other days, other the based approach is a clinical approach when any person coming with signs and symptoms is just prescribed the drugs without doing the investigations to find out the organism involved and then there comes a syndromic approach. 